paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Paroxysmal means episodic or in the form of attacks. Nocturnal means at night. Hemoglobin urea, hemoglobin in the urine. The problem is a pyga gene mutation. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. We continue our series on hematology. Okay, PNH is an acquired chronic hemolytic anemia. Contrast that with thalassemia or sickle cell anemia. Those were inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. PNH is acquired. It's not congenital. It's not inherited. It's acquired. After you're born, you acquire this disease. Due to the effect in the myeloid stem cells, myeloid stem cells will give rise to red blood cells, neutrophils, and platelets, and others. The mutation is in the pyga gene on the short arm of the X chromosome, position 22.2. The mutation occurs after birth, hence acquired. By the way, pyga stands for Phosphatidyl inositol glycan anchor biosynthesis class A. Holy guacamole. Pygogene encodes an enzyme that synthesizes something called membrane associated proteins. These regulate the complement and they include GPI, which stands for glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol. Whew. If there is no GPI, there is no complement regulatory proteins, which include cluster differentiation 55, also known as decay accelerating factor, and cluster differentiation 59, also known as membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis, also known as homologous restriction factor. Did you understand the thing? Of course not, but that's why medicosis is here. Let's dissect everything so that you can understand all of these crazy words. Let's review some immunology. Complement system. Why the name is complement? Because it complements the ability of antibodies to do their job. Three different pathways depending on who pulls the trigger. Who will start the cascade? If it's antigen antibody complex, this is the classical pathway. If it's the bacterial endotoxin, this is the alternative pathway. If mannose binding lectin, this is the lectin pathway. In PNH, the problem is usually in the alternative pathway, so let's elaborate. Now, alternative pathway of the complement. What triggers the cascade is bacterial endotoxin, which is a lipopolysaccharide in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. That was nice microbiology there. We start with factor C3, hydrolysis in the presence of water, into factor C3B. It will bind with factor B, and then factor D will convert factor B into BA and BB. Factor BB will combine with C3B to form C3 convertase. This is a big deal. C3 convertase will convert C3 into C3A and C3B. C3B will bind with C3 convertase to form C5 convertase. C5 convertase will do what? Convert C5 into C5A and C5B. C5B together with C6, 7, 8, and 9 will form something called the MAC. This is not anti-Microsoft and this is not McDonald's either. This is the membrane attack complex. It will form a pore in the cell membrane of the bacteria which will disrupt the ionic and osmotic environment of the cell and now the bacteria will die. Go to hell. Shakespeare time, please. To attack or not to attack, this is the question. How does the complement differentiate between self and non-self? Non-self bacteria are foreigners and we should destroy them. But self are our own cells such as red blood cells we should never touch them how does the complement know thanks to complement regulatory proteins think of regulatory as inhibitory they inhibit the complement from attacking 
These include CD55 and CD59. So this is the cell membrane of your red blood cell or neutrophil or platelets. These are the myeloid lineage. There are no lymphocytes here because these are the lymphoid stem cell origin. Now the pyga gene will encode an enzyme that will give rise to GPI. GPI is an anchor protein. It will anchor CD55 and CD59 to the cell membrane. CD55 will prevent the formation of C3 convertase so the complement cannot attack. CD59 will block the binding of C9 so there is no MAC. When there is no MAC, there is no attack and everybody is happy and the complement can recognize the cell and not attack it. This is normal. Let's see now, you will understand every single word on this page. PNH is an acquired chronic hemolytic anemia due to defect in the myeloid stem cells. Yes, pyga gene mutation. Correct, pyga encodes for GPI. If there is no GPI, there is no CD55 or CD59, so the complement will destroy the normal blood cells, the self. The complement attacks the red blood cell in an intravascular hemolysis most of the time. PNH is an intrinsic, intravascular, acquired hemolytic anemia. What a sentence. Hemolysis throughout the day, but when you go to bed, you increase your urine concentration. This is true, because the first morning urine sample is the highest concentration. So, you will see your urine darker and it has hemoglobin in it. So, the patient is shouting, Doctor, help me! There is blood in my urine! Complications of PNH include iron deficiency anemia. Why? Because you are losing hemoglobin in the urine. As well as acute myeloid, not lymphoid, myeloid leukemia. Most common cause of death, thrombosis, especially venous. What's the cause of thrombosis? Nobody knows. A theory suggests that of the myeloid lineage are platelets. When platelets are destroyed by the complement, they produce some factors which are pro-coagulant and lead to thrombosis. Okay, venous thrombosis in the hepatic veins known as Bud Chiari syndrome portal or cerebral and the second most common cause of death is infection. Now clinically, a nice triad, hemolytic anemia, pancytopenia and venous thrombosis. Hemolytic anemia will have its symptoms as splenomegaly as we have discussed in our famous video intravascular versus extravascular hemolysis. Pancytopenia, no neutrophils, infections, no platelets, bleeding, no red blood cells, fatigue, and anemia. Okay, aplastic anemia can coexist with the pancytopenia of PNH. Venous thrombosis, depending on the location in hepatic veins, this is Bud Chiari syndrome, in absence of any liver disease. So the patient liver is completely fine, no cirrhosis, no hepatitis, no cancer, but the veins are having thrombosis. This is PNH, abdominal veins, spell necrosis and severe abdominal pain, cerebral veins, stroke, veins of the skin, skin nodules. Esophageal spasms may coincide with hemoglobinuria. This is high yield. PNH can cause fever of unknown origin. Now let's go to the lab. CBC, how about hemoglobin and hematocrit? Both are decreased because this is the definition of anemia. How about reticulocytes are increased because this is a response from the bone marrow to hemolysis. Except if there is aplastic anemia, in that case reticulocytes will be low, but most of the times they are high. MCV is usually normal, which means 80 to 100, but there are some tiny exceptions. One of the complications of PNH is iron deficiency anemia, which will lead to low MCV. Another exception, if reticulocytosis exists, MCV will be high because as you know, reticulocytosis are mature red blood cells and they are larger than the red blood cells, raising the MCV. In the serum, LDH is high, 
unconjugated bilirubin is high, heptoglobin is low, and go back to my video on hemolysis. Direct Coombs test is negative because there is no antigen antibody reaction. There is no classical complement pathway. Contrast that with autoimmune hemolytic anemia where the Coombs test is positive because then there is antigen antibody reaction. Sucrose hemo hemolysis test is very unreliable and it's a screening test. Acidified serum test or HAM is very reliable used for confirmation. Flow cytometry is the gold standard. It can detect the absence of CD55 and CD59, which is PNH. How to treat PNH? PNH is a hemolytic anemia. Give iron and folate if severe RBC transfusion. Glucocorticoids can be used in hemolytic anemias, but specifically in PNH, they are contraindicated. Eclusumab is a new miraculous drug for PNH. MAB means monoclonal antibody. Antibody against one antigen and one antigen only. This one antigen is C5. Eclizumab will bind to C5 and prevents its cleavage into C5A, C5B by the enzyme C5 convertase. There is no C5A, C5B, so there is no MAC and no attack. It reduces mortality, so patient can live longer. If you are giving eclizumab, vaccinate against Neisseria meningitis. Definitive treatment, of course, is stem cell transplant. If PNH coexists with aplastic anemia, do a bone marrow transplant. See you in the next video, a mnemonic on PNH.